Thanks for listening to Entree Nito, the show where we help you live the Nito life. By listening to Entree Nito, you'll learn how to develop multiple streams of income. You'll hear amazing stories and takeaways from professionals in their field. And you'll learn more about yourself and how you're wired. The average person spends 90,000 hours at work in their lifetime. Student loan debt is at an all-time high, and 41% of all divorce is based on finances. If you feel like you're surviving, but you wouldn't exactly say you're thriving, then you've come to the right place. Whatever stage of life you're in, Entre Nido is here to help you be a better entrepreneur, break out of that rat race, and start living your Nido life today. And now, introducing your Nido host, Matt Neff. Welcome back to Entre Nido. I'm your host, Matt Neff. And on today's show, we interview the hilariously brilliant Mike Michalowicz. Well, it is good to be back in the studio, everybody. We had an excellent time in Gatlinburg, Tennessee. We rode go-karts, a mountain coaster, ate a ton of carbs, gluten. It was amazing. Everything was covered in sausage gravy. It was incredible. Also, I recently got back from Lakewood, Colorado on a trip, and I want to give a shout out to one of my favorite coffee places in Denver. It's called Starbucks. I don't know if you've ever heard of it. It's actually called Corvus Coffee, C-O-R-B-U-S, Corvus Coffee in Denver, Colorado. Check it out. They have a couple locations. They make a great coffee, multiple great coffees, and they also make one of my favorite diner mugs I've ever gotten from the road. So make sure you check them out if you're traveling in the area, Corvus Coffee in Denver, Colorado. On today's show, I interview Mike Michalowicz. Mike is the entrepreneur behind three multi-million dollar companies and is the author of Profit First, The Pumpkin Plan, and what Business Week deemed the entrepreneur's cult classic, The Toilet Paper Entrepreneur. Mike is a former small business columnist for the Wall Street Journal and regularly travels the globe as an entrepreneurial advocate. Mike and I talked today about his backstory, some takeaways from his book, Profit First, and discuss his latest book, Clockwork, Design Your Business to Run Itself. This is one of my favorite interviews of 2019. We've interviewed a ton of great, interesting people. Mike is such a great conversationalist, very approachable, hilarious guy and his content is second to none. You're going to love the interview today. As always, thank you for listening to Entre Nito. If you get a chance, check out entrenito.com for archived interviews, exclusive blog posts from our guests. Grab yourself a Nito t-shirt and make sure to get your free book by clicking on the free book tab at the top of the screen. Thanks to our friends at Audible. Also, if you would like to go above and beyond, please consider supporting the show through our Patreon page or by leaving us a written review on iTunes. And as always, you guys know the drill, subscribe to the show. Now on to today's interview. Welcome back to Entre Nido. My guest today is the Mike Michalowicz from Profit First. Mike, welcome to the show. Matt, thanks for having me. I, I'm already laughing because I'm thinking the Mike Michalowicz. I, I think I'm the only Mike Michalowicz ever. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, we don't want to get people confused. They're like, wait, which <laughs> right, one right, is right. this? There's so many of these. Oh, we put the in the front of it, like the Ohio State University. So it <laughs> right, right, uh, makes it more prestigious. Right. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. No, that's me doing that to you. That's not you. You know, you didn't demand that. Your people were no, saying, no, like, listen, not. when you introduce him, don't blow it. He'll hang up on you if you don't introduce him as the. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, I'm super pumped to have you on the show. Your books are amazing. Profit First is so good. It's really helped my business, helped me think about what am I doing with my business? What's the right way? And you've really challenged the status quo, as it were, with stuffy business mindsets and things like that. So thank you for your work. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Uh, before we jump into everything, I would love for you to promote away anything you'd like to share with our audience. Oh, um, I accept checks in denominations of any size, quite frankly. Perfect. Well, or, great. Or money. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what I'm, I guess, you know, the thing to check out is uh, uh, the starting point for me is my website. It's MikeMichalowicz.com. We, we were laughing about this off air. It, I, no one can spell that. So exactly. I do have a shortcut. It's MikeMotorbike.com. And if you go to MikeMotorbike.com, I uh, have all my books there, chapter downloads for all of them. Actually, one of, my, one of my books is entirely free. Just click and download. And I'm also a former columnist for the Wall Street Journal a podcaster and a blogger. So all that content's at mikemotorbike.com. Perfect. Thank you. And we're going to put all that in the show notes as well. So people can uh, safely scroll while they drive and or while they run on the treadmill and get all those links as well to, to all your resources. So thank you again. So mm -hmm. Mike, I know a little bit of your backstory, but I would love to share your backstory just with, with our listeners, people that may not know you yet. Uh, yeah, of course, how you of got to, to where you are today. Yeah. So I am a lifelong entrepreneur I started my first business when I was uh, right out of college and um, re over time realized uh, I didn't understand uh, a lot of components about entrepreneurship. The irony is from the outside, they look successful. I, I built a couple companies. I was able to sell two of them. Actually, one was acquired by a Fortune 500. And uh, 
that kind of, that's the outward resume, you know, wow, looks good. But honestly, to fill out my resume, yeah, I need to put like, you know, proficient at Microsoft Word or something <laughs> on there. Because the, the reality, the real part of the resume is clueless what I was doing, um, accumulated ridiculous amounts of debt, um, refinanced my house, my starter house. I couldn't even afford to cover payroll one, uh, one month and, and um, struggled. I also started a third business that I conveniently leave off my resume that uh, I was an angel investor and I started 10 companies assuming that if, uh, if I couldn't do well with one at a time, maybe I'd do better with you know 10 at a time. And uh, wow. that was 10 times, that was 10 times worse. Yeah, I blew all my, yeah, I, it's just moronic. I blew all my money wow. and um, that I lost my house over. So I, I, I had three children by the time and, and I uh, lost my house, lost all my possessions and, and uh, did not lose my family. They stood by me. And uh, I endeavored from that day forward. And it was a lot more traumatic. I'm kind of racing through it. But it that day forward committed to find to challenging my own beliefs, um, hopefully to rip out the arrogance I had around what I thought I was, and to really understand entrepreneurship at a fundamental level. I also endeavored that day forward to become an author. So for the last, that was only 11 years ago, but for the last 11 years, I am a full-time author. I, I still do own businesses. I have three companies that I'm invested in, um, but there's there's partners and presidents I have for each one. But um, I am a full-time author now trying to make entrepreneurship and the I'm trying to make tools for entrepreneurs that make entrepreneurship simple and accessible and doable and actionable. You know, entrepreneurship's never going to be easy. I wish I could say I'm making entrepreneurship easy. I don't know if that's going to happen, but I'm trying to make it accessible and doable for for people like me that that just needed some extra help and 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 didn't know how to go about it. That's so good, and it's it's helpful too because I think a lot of times in business there's a lot of self proclaimed business people and and they've got the business cards and they've got the website and you can so fake it. I've been around good people. I think they their hearts right, but I'm like I don't I don't really know what you sell. I yeah. don't know what, what are, what are you? What is this? You know, it's just these kind of these words. And we talked off air about entre Nito. Like I put the word Nito in there intentionally because I don't want to take myself too seriously. And I feel like <laughs> you're like that yeah. with your books and, and the audio portions and things where you go off, off tangent, which I love. That's some of my favorite parts where it's like, I don't feel like we're going to help people if we're confusing them and just showing them the highlight reel all the time. So I love with profit first. It's like, this is actionable, like takeaways you can do right now. What I did was I looked at profitability first at myself and realized that I wasn't doing what my accountant was effectively begging me to do. His name is Keith. He's like, Mike, you got to read your income statement and your balance sheet and your cash flow statement. You got to tie these metrics in and blah, 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 blah. And what I would do is I'd say, okay, okay, I'll do it all. And I earnestly believed I would, but I would then go back to the office and you know, business would ensue, panic would ensue, and I would run my business by the bank balance. I would simply log into my bank account. It was the fastest thing I could do, see how much money was there. And based upon what balance I saw, I'd take action. If there was no money, I would uh, panic and try to sell something to someone. And if there was money there, I, I would justify spending it. And so what I realized is this behavior wasn't only mine. This is pretty common. Most entrepreneurs run their business by checking their bank balances regularly. So I realized that if I want to affect change, to change myself is near impossible. For any of us to change ourselves is very difficult. So instead, is there a way to set up a system that captures our existing behavioral patterns that drives the result we want? So I said, well, if I log into my bank account every day and see how much money I have, is there a way to run or log into my bank account every day and drive profit just by logging into my bank account? And that's that was the hypothesis I had for Profit First and developed a system for myself um, starting 10 years ago. When I became an author, I started doing this system, but I published the book after about six years of research. Four years ago, the book came out. Oh, that's great. Wow. I didn't realize you did that much research on the book. That's that's awesome. So you really know like this is going to work. This holds up still after year after year. So that's that's really cool. Yeah. You know, the funny thing is like I write the concept down and within a few months, I'm like, this is it. I've nailed it. And then I start doing it. I'm like, oh, this isn't working. Uh -huh. So the original concept of profit first wasn't what it is today. And uh, I had to trash a lot of what I thought to be true. And uh, I thought you could take shortcuts like use a spreadsheet and so forth. And you couldn't. I, I, you know, mm -hmm. It would work for one person, but not another. Ultimately, 
you know, the, the research, and I gotta use that term loosely. It's not like I have like these researchers like running clinical tests. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's a lab involved. In <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Research to me means that we had about 150 to 200 companies going through this and reporting back what they were finding. And once we got consistency, once it was working every time over and over again, I was like, okay, now we figured out the system. So you've evolved, you've got profit first, you're learning, you're, you're seeing if it holds water and all those different things, which is really cool. I love that you're going back to the drawing board and you put so much time into it as well. I wanted to talk to kind of today's topic. I'd love to, to jump into more is your, is your new book clockwork and just kind of hear the brainchild behind that and how you got to that point and, and tell us about the book and what it's like. And, and, um, you know, on the show too, we do this where it's like, we try to, and, and we've done, I mean, over a hundred episodes by this point, we've been doing this for about wow. three years. We never want to feel like sham. Wow. You know what I mean? Like sales. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And I try to protect that. And the people that we have on have been awesome and we want to bring value and content. So if you're, if you're new to Mike's, uh, work, things like that, he's legit. But with that, I don't want this to be, you know, just a, a book sale thing. And I know Mike doesn't want that either, but we do want to know more about his work, things like that. And I was like, Hey, can we talk about clockwork today? So I just want everybody yeah. to know this wasn't like, well, you know, Mr. McCallowitz uh, yeah. demands that you talk about clockwork or he right, right, right. Make sure you separate out the uh, red M and M's, please. Yeah, exactly. Seventy-two yeah. degrees, the whole thing. So, <laughs> so I want to talk about this today. I'm curious, and that's one of the things I built this podcast around. Was like, I want to talk to great people to have the have great stories. I would love to hear right. more about clockwork. Yeah, so clockwork uh, was a discovery, and I wonder if your listeners, Matt, can relate to this. I thought the biggest form of poverty was financial poverty. And what I mean by this is when it comes to entrepreneurs is check to check survival, no money left over, um, panic. And I was like, okay, that that's the definition of poverty. And, um, you know, profit first, I hope is a solution to that. Then I found, oh my gosh, there's a greater form of poverty and it's time impoverishment. Hmm. The lack of time we, particularly as entrepreneurs have available to just live life. Many people apparently are in life to support business, not in business to support life. And I was one of those guys. I actually proudly wore the workaholic badge. Look mm -hmm. at me. Yeah. I remember a, Matt, a friend of mine, his name is John Bates. And I was talking to John and he goes, Mike, I, uh, I only slept four hours last night. I, I really was grinding it out. I'm exhausted. <laughs> and I laughed. And I go, John, I only slept three hours. <laughs> like one a big upper. D bag. I was such a D bag, like bragging about <laughs> my right. lack of sleep. I just want to kick myself right now. I love it. Thank you for being honest. Yes. Yeah. Well, what I realized, not in that moment, I, I went through my debaggery, but <laughs> what, what I noticed was um, that we have this perversion as entrepreneurs to carry a business on our back, to be the superhero for our business, mm. to work relentless hours, and to believe that we need to grind and hustle. And I understand those are the buzz terms and buzzwords for today. Yep. I um. I understand the good intention behind it, but they're being misinterpreted that you, if you don't work your tail off, you're not going to be successful. And my counter argument is if you work your tail off, you has the definition of not being successful because you're not thinking at the smart level. You're not thinking how to get other resources, uh, other people, other elements choreographed to bring the results about. Hmm. So clockwork is about eradicating time poverty where we design our business to run itself. Th that's why I wrote that book. That is so cool. I have not read it yet. I need to get a copy. Uh, when did it come out? That's a good question. I think it came out uh, in 2018, I think uh, in the summer of 2018. So it's about nine months old now Okay, as we, okay. As we record this. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Okay. Yeah, I definitely need to check that out because I just got through uh, Profit First and I loved it. And I'm like a guy that's like, I want to take my time on books and not just rush through it. But people ask me like, oh, what books should I read next, Mike, of yours or, or anyone's? And mm -hmm. I used to say, oh, read Clockwork. I just released it. And now I'm like, I don't know if Clockwork... Matt is, is actually the appropriate read for you next. Hmm. I think the right read is whatever challenge you're facing. Like say your, your biggest challenge is like you're struggling to retain employees. I, I had a problem with hiring for a long time. I haven't written that book, but there's a lot of great books out there about that. So, you know, we, I think we should investigate what our challenge is and then read that book. Now, one little caveat, I have certain authors I'm addicted to. Uh, Malcolm Gladwell, like he sneezes. And I'm like, I got to read about oh, that sneeze. Yeah. David like, and Goliath. Yeah. And right. Exactly. I totally go geez. like man crush. Yeah. So if Malcolm Gladwell writes a book, for God's sake, get like 10 copies. <laughs> I, I feel the same way about Seth Godin. Yeah. And so there are certain authors that you got to read, but I think 
determine the challenge we're facing and find those books. That's going to best serve us. Mm, that's good. I, I've looked at that before, like in, in my life and business, things like that. You know, it's like that cheesy old school uh, food pyramid where you're like, you know, I need like seven to nine grains <laughs> and nine to 11. Fruit, yeah. You know, so I think sometimes you're low in vitamin C, vitamin D, things like that. So it's like, I always looked at it that way. Like, okay, I'm, I'm low in this area. Let me, let me, yeah, let me learn I like more about that. I like network that. marketing or let me learn more about sales or let me learn more about public speaking. And I, I, I think like, okay, I think I'm low here. And so that's what I try to do. And I think it's the same thing that you're saying is just find that where you're low or even like a car, like, oh, I'm a yeah, court low in this that. and I need this and that. So uh, feel free to take that idea and write a book on yeah, it. Yeah, I'll totally steal it. My okay. next book is like, what's your vitamin deficiency? Yeah, it's called Mike Food McCall. Pyramid. The, Matt Neff is not really referenced at all. Just, <laughs> I steal that. <laughs> I have a timestamp. <laughs> it's recorded. It's you recorded. I don't know what he thought he was going to get away with. <laughs> but no, that's super helpful. Yeah, I love uh, I love Malcolm Gladwell stuff too. It's just, it hits a different part of my brain. It works a different set of muscles that I'm like, whoa, the Beatles, like, practicing for all these years and the 10,000 hour principle and all that stuff. It's amazing. So with clockwork, what, what's like one, one takeaway that you'd be willing to share? Oh yeah. I'll, I'll share anything you want. I, I, I'll share probably the most uh, discussed concept. Um, and it's this concept called the QBR. It's the heart of the book. And um, the QBR stands for the heart of a business. It stands for queen bee role. And how it came about was as I was studying business efficiency, I was looking at all these different companies and I struggled actually to, find the common thread of business efficiency. Um, even though I was looking at very efficient companies, they all had their own like secret formula. So I then went back to looking at nature. And, and this is a, one lesson I've discovered that when you can't find something uh, in uh, the business world, often nature has an answer and it can be translated. Hmm. And I found that beehives are extremely efficient. Hmm. So I was looking at beehives and found that beehives have a simple rule that uh, you have to protect the queen bee's role. Now, the queen bee's role is to lay eggs when it comes to beehives. The, the reason is, is that bees die very quickly. Depends on the species, but they can live four weeks on the short side up to maybe four or even six months on the long side. So there's a lot of turnover, if I can use that word, in beehives. <laughs> and uh, what bees do is every bee knows that egg production is the biggest priority. Now, not every bee produces eggs. In fact, only the queen bee does. But it's not that the queen bee is most important. It's that role of producing eggs. Mm. They protect it. And if the queen bee, by the way, fails to produce, a new queen bee is spawned. The old queen bee is expunged. So it's, it's all about producing eggs. Mm. We have to determine for our own business. Every business has something that determines its thrivability or survivability. And a beehive it survives on producing eggs and, and therefore thrives. Every business has a singular component that our survivability and therefore thrivability depends on. Yet very few business owners, I didn't know what it was, very few business owners do. And without knowing it, we don't concentrate on protecting it. If we're not protecting it, we are constantly surprised that our business kind of grows ahead and it slows down and it struggles and it seems to be working and it's not. And two steps forward, three steps back, like what's going on? It's inevitably that we're not protecting the QBR. So the core essence of this book is, and there's a methodology, find your QBR, pinpoint it, Protect it for all it's got because that is your thrivability factor. And if you simply serve that one component, shockingly, or maybe not so much, the entire business elevates in a tremendous way, both efficiency way, wise, but also in its recognition in the community because you start delivering on your key promise. Your reputation is hinged on this. Wow. So, you, so you grow and people notice. That is so good. And is it almost like the 20%, 80% rule? Like yeah, yeah. It's a Pareto okay. principle. That is so That's exactly good. what it is. Okay. I love that. That's so cool. Like I would, I've never thought to look to nature for any, for any answers. I don't know what that means about me, but uh, what that means about you're me. normal. I like, got maybe I think I'm the weirdo. No, I, mean, I, just, I think that's brilliant. I'm like, it's, it just seems like so many times you get busy in business and managing the machine of life. And we're like missing like these very obvious facts, you know? Yeah. I, maybe, I just, maybe. I, maybe we just, we don't slow down enough, but that's brilliant. I love that. I'm going to well, start you. looking in nature more. My, my ego has been stroked. Thank there you. There you go. You are welcome. That's what this is all about. <laughs> so, um, yeah, no, that's, that's, that's really cool. Well, I don't want to give too much away. I want people to buy the book. Um, we're going to put a link to, uh, in the show notes as well to, to promote away and, uh, yeah, buy 10 copies people. Um, that's just a taste. <laughs> that's just a taste of the honey, if you will, if that works. What? Yeah. The one thing that is nice about it is, uh, you're, if you have employees too, um, they can absorb this too and start taking it on. You, the idea is, the best, strongest businesses do not depend on the owner. Yet, unfortunately, many small businesses, the owner sees themselves as a superhero. Those two perceptions are totally at odds. Wow. 
our goal really needs to be to remove ourselves from the business. So uh, yeah, that's the, that's the goal. That's so cool. And I feel like the culture has changed too, even with, you know, it was like Superman, Wonder Woman, all the things like that. And I even totally. see it in Hollywood now where it's the Avengers. Right. They're, they're starting to become teams, right? That's a beautiful transition. Yeah. It's, a, it's a very team oriented kind of thing now. You know, I think it's it's very interesting. We are almost rounding third here, but I would love to hear kind of any final thoughts. What's some what's some things in your mind? What's one takeaway? What's something you'd love to share with the audience? So I'll give you something uh, that's kind of new for me. Um, so because I'm working on my new book, so this is just on top of mind. Sweet. And uh, this book uh, won't come out to 2020, so it doesn't even have a title yet. So I can't say, "Hey, go run by it." I have no idea what it is. I've been studying Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Okay. And what it, what I found is there is translates into there is a business hierarchy of needs. I used to believe that business growth depended upon certain financial milestones, revenue being the biggest promoter, you know, or determinant of your growth. Like, oh, you got to achieve 500,000 to do this. And once you get to a million, you got that. And if you hit 5 million, you know, these great things happen or these tough cha- challenges present themselves. Mm-hmm. And I've discovered that um, that is not true. There's actually a need structure in a business very similar to Maslow's hierarchy of needs for human nature. So for example, the base need of humanity is physiological needs. Like we all need food, water, uh, oxygen to survive. Once you have that, then we need shelter, for example. Mm -hmm. Once that is served, then we need to belong to a community to experience uh, community and uh, affection. And you you go to the highest level, which is self-actualization. And what Maslow said is if any level below the level you're at is compromised, the current level no longer matters and we revert back to the base level need. Meaning like we could be having this great conversation, Matt, and all of a sudden you start like gasping for air because uh, there's a a carbon monoxide leak in your, in your studio. Mm -hmm. Like you don't say, Oh, let's keep the conversation rolling. You're like, I'm the F out of here, bro. And (laughs) you're running. Right. That's mad. You probably use a little more flowery words, but it happens so many times in my studio. I probably should need to get it looked at, but (laughs) (laughs) so, uh, I what I found is in business we have this hierarchy of needs. There's five levels: sales being the base, profit, uh, this thing called order, uh, impact, and then ultimately the uh, highest level is called legacy. And what I found is as we climb to higher levels, that we have to be very cognizant of a lower level being compromised. When it does, the business must revert to it to address it. Some people, for example, are trying to achieve this legacy and impact, but they haven't figured out sales first. Well, I'm sorry, your business will never succeed until we get that base level of sales addressed. Some businesses are all about bringing about order, which means efficiency, uh, choreographing our, the resources of organization, but haven't figured out profit yet. That's a, that's a disaster. So hmm. it, it's this interesting model that um, we have to address needs. And what I want people listening to, to feel some relief about is you no longer have to worry about, oh, am I doing that number? Whatever the number may be. It's not about numbers. It's about needs. The right size business can find you if you live within the needs structure of business. Oh, that's really good. You have this really unique way. You're like the myth buster for human business interactions. Because it's like you, you come <laughs> at I'll this, take that. That's cool. Yeah, it's like you come at this like different angle of like, I love I love the uniqueness because it's it's honestly really refreshing because I've I've had the opportunity to read incredible books, a lot of great books, and a lot of times it's kind of the saying the same thing. It's an echo, but yeah. I, and I'm not trying to butter you up, but it's like you're a voice versus an echo in this business culture, which is which is super helpful. I like your refre- It's a, f- a refreshing approach, I'd say. You know, dude, yeah. I feel totally buttered right now. Yeah, so, yeah. but know, thank you for I saying know. that. No, it's um, the <laughs> truth though, and I'm not trying to be. And people know me on the show that I'm not trying to be. You know, I, I definitely appreciate your time and your work for sure, but it's like it doesn't serve me, it doesn't serve you to just butter you up. What's the point? I mean, the interview's over. I mean, you know what I mean? Like, what would yeah, be you the can, point? Yeah, now? you can call me a total jackwad and like hang up. And you still got the tape. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. But no, I, I do appreciate that in Thanks. that mindset Thanks. of like, yeah, to look at nature, to look at uh, the different laws that we need. And I, yeah, it's always like food, shelter, all that stuff. But I'm like, oh yeah, for a business, for an organization, I love that. I think that's brilliant. So yeah, um, I wish you the best of luck on the on the new book as well, and we'll definitely be supported. And l- I'd love to talk again about it once it uh, comes out. We can. I'll promote it as well. But um, we are at that time, my friend. If you could just one more time promote anything you'd like to, books, uh, website, anything else we could drive our listeners to. Thank you so much for for letting me do this. Uh, so th- the website is mikemotorbike.com. And like, like I said earlier, all my books, chapter downloads are there. Actually, um, in the next month or two, from as, as of as recording this, a whole new website is getting rolled out to make uh, access to the resources even easier and faster. 
Okay. So everything's there at mikemotorbike.com. And uh, hopefully you'll find it to be a different and fun website too. That's perfect. I, I appreciate it. And uh, yeah, I want to tell our listeners also, make sure you get over to Mike's website and you can download a free copy uh, of his book, Surge. Make sure you check it out. It's like, That's right. is it 342 pages? Is that right? Something like that. Yeah, it's the full book. I, and it's, it's like, full book. you don't have to pay seven bucks for shipping. Like none of that stuff. You, yeah. you get the whole book. Now it is a PDF. I mean, if you want to print it, but you can put it on your uh, Kindle or something yeah. like that. Yeah, that's what I do. I open it either in, in iBooks or I open it in Kindle and, and it works great. So, um, but yeah, thank you for that. But check that out, uh, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, Mike, this has been great. Th thank you so much for your time today. Thank you, Matt. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Entre Nido. We'd like to invite you to visit us on the web at entrenido.com and hear some of the Nido things you can expect when you get there. As a token of our appreciation for tuning in, you can download a free audiobook. And that's thanks to our friends at Audible. You can purchase your very own super official, super comfy, and super trendy Nido t-shirt. Looking to take your life and business to the next level? You can sign up for a free coaching call. Have a question or comment for us? you can click contact and connect with us. All of this and more is waiting for you at entrenito.com. Finally, don't forget to subscribe to our show and stay current on all the amazing interviews with our Nito guests. Now take what you've learned and apply it and start living your Nito life now.